Welcome to this week's episode here on Overworked Admin. Uh, this is the fifth in our 14 part series of uh, PowerShell. Uh, we are almost a third through. You have gotten a lot of background information about PowerShell and we've seen a little bit here and there, but now we're really gonna move on from the theory and talk a little bit more about the practical application of PowerShell. So I hope you're ready. Um, one thing that you're gonna notice as we've been going through the videos so far is generally we have a couple of different ways to work through um, and work in PowerShell. One, um, we have the ability to um, use just like PowerShell from the command line. So if we wanna do git process, oops, if I actually complete the command, it will just return us this data. But as we work with more commands and we want to do more things, we want to be able to have an environment where we can construct blocks of code. So that's really what the PowerShell ISE is good for. We can run, we can do git process up here and we get code hinting and it'll return it to us. Um, as you can see down in the bottom window, these numbers are flying by. Uh, but it also allows us to write larger blocks of code. So Using the, the Windows PowerShell ISE will really be the preferred place uh, to work, and this is what we will be working with uh, for the rest of our video series. Uh, another thing that we need to understand when working with scripting languages or even programming languages is the concept of variables. So think about it this way. A variable is just a symbolic reference for another piece of data. So something that we would use in everyday life, capital, right? The capital of a country. If you're a citizen of the US, your capital, your capital maybe or is Washington DC. Let's say, say you're from India, your capital would be New Delhi. If you were from China, your capital would be Beijing. So using the word capital could refer to many different things depending on what your current scenario is. And it's exactly the same way um, in, in computer scripting or programming. So if we wanted to say capital equals, and now we've simply assigned this string to this variable. Um, and it's really that easy. So now what can we do with this variable and, and what other sorts of variables can we have? Well, the first thing we'll talk about is some other types of variables. We have string in Washington DC as a string. You could have integer. So let's say number in how we create a variable is we use this dollar sign. So that little dollar sign there indicates that this will be a variable and you could do one. Um, we have booleans, uh, which could be true or false. So um, I'm going to go true, false, uh, equals true. And this is not necessarily true, how you would create a, a, a boolean here. Um, so if I, you see I got an error. I, it says, cannot convert the value system string to the type Boolean, right? So uh, use true or false. So if I were to want a actual Boolean value, I could go true, actually I go, I would assign it like this, bool, true false equals one or zero. So what you're seeing here is what you would do if you had a strictly typed language, like if you were used to writing in C-sharp or something of that nature. In PowerShell, I don't have to declare like what kind of variable. So like, let's say I wanted to do integer or this is string. I don't have to declare these variables and say capital is a string, integer is one. Um, Boolean is one or zero. As you can see here, use true or false, one or zero. So these are things that are good practice to do, but you don't have to do. Um, so let's say just for example, just for the, because we're starting off, we'll just put these in quotes. And a quote is an indication that the variable will be a string variable. No, actually it's still not gonna like that. Um, so cannot convert variable. So true, false, so 
this is going to, I believe, make me use a one. So as you can see, it actually made, it, it made me use a one there. So if we clear this out, it is actually looking for, and I'm, I'm not, not actually sure why it's doing this, but it's actually looking for a specific character. And it should accept zero as well. It is. Now let's see if it gives us three. This is a learning experience for me as well. I'm guessing this will error. Maybe not. So, but it is looking for something um, that it can register as a Boolean. I'll have to do a little bit more research on that and I'll post it in the blog article for you. So, but as you can see, it's fairly easy to um, assign variables. Let's just do TF for true false and see if this gives us a different result. Um, it's fairly easy to assign variables. Uh, I'll, I bet you that it's holding on to true false as a Boolean. So if we were to do this, Okay, this actually brings out a really interesting point. I'm kind of glad this happened. You know, different things occur when you're doing a tutorial. Because we initially made this variable a Boolean um, and we didn't expressly set it to something else, it was being held in memory as a Boolean. And even though we removed this Boolean in front of it, um, it still registered that as a Boolean in memory. So if you do set something strictly, you have to be really careful about how you use it later on. So what can we do with these variables, right? So we have these variables in memory. Let's just say Washington DC. Well, what we can do is we want to get this data back to us. So what we want to do is we want to say, and did you see that come up there, right? And we have a couple options, host. And what this is going to do is this is actually going to write the data back out to the screen. So what we're going to do, if I could spell properly, is we're going to set a variable to Washington DC, and then we're gonna write this data, and write host will write it back out to the screen, it's gonna write it to the screen. So as you can see here, write host, we set the variable here, and then it's being written back out to the screen. So what else can we do? Let's do my cap is, let's see what we've got. So as you can see here, now we've mixed a normal string with the variable at the end of the string. And, and so what does that do? It means that we can start assigning variables and when we want to display these variables back, we can mix them in a larger structure of a string. So this is kind of really, it's not kind of, it is really important to understand this. There is something else that you need to know when you're working with a string. So let's say, um, Stevens, let's do this. Steven's name is Steven. First of all, I want you to look at something. If you can see that the color on the screen is a little bit different, but I want you to watch something here. I'm actually going to get rid of this capital because I'm trying to illustrate just the point about using strings and um, quotes. See, the string is missing the terminator. So if you have a quote, a single or double quote inside of a string, you need to make sure that you're using different strings on the outside. So for this particular string, I would need to use double quotes on the outside and then a single quote on the inside. And as you can see, here it worked. So these are some of the little things that you kind of need to pay attention to when you start scripting. So go through, go back to the blog, check out the homeworks. There's some things to do there about assigning variables, writing variables out, mixing variables with strings and quotes. And these are really the, the building blocks that we will be using and, and you will always use as you script throughout the rest of the, the, the program and the rest of the tutorials. So thank you for checking out this week's edition. Um, it is December 23rd, so happy holidays or happy season to everybody that's watching. I hope you have a good holiday and a good new year. Um, we'll be back with the uh, next uh, tutorial, Lesson 6. If you appreciate the content and you like the ads that our sponsors are putting in there, check them out. It's how we get the channel uh, funded and how we keep running, and there's some should be only relevant data. Um, Thanks again for watching Overworked Admin and have a great day.